Hey guys, Kevin here with eTrailer, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install the Kodiak Disc Brake Kit here on our flatbed trailer. If you're looking for better stopping power with your trailer's brakes, or if you just want to have more consistent braking as you're going down the road, then disc brakes might be the right solution for you. Brake pads offer a much better stopping power for your uh, brake assembly versus your electric drum brakes, which are also going to be a lot harder to replace over time. If you have issues with the brake shoe, it's a lot more challenging to swap those out versus just swapping out these brake pads that you can easily pop off by pulling out your two bolts in the back and swapping out your brake pads. The integrated hub and rotor makes it super easy to switch over. It's already going to have your studs so that you don't have to press those in. The Vents along the whole side of it is going to allow for better heat dissipation so that way you're not tearing up your bearings inside or kind of overheating any of the other components in there. The really nice thing about it is it's easy for oil bath setup so it makes it a much cleaner and easier to use um, lubrication system for your bearings. As far as installation goes this is a super simple and easy process to do. It just can be very messy especially if you are set up with grease. So you do want to make sure that you have plenty of gloves and plenty of shop towels so that you can wipe it all away, get it nice and clean before you switch over to your oil bath. For the first step of our installation, we're going to go ahead and get these wheels out of the way. We've already lifted up our trailer so that our wheels and our axles can kind of have a little bit more room. Um, if you don't have a strong enough gun to get your lug nuts off, make sure you break those off before you lift your trailer up. Next, we're going to take off our oil cap right here. Um, if you wanted to, you could use a uh, pry bar like I'm going to do, or you could have just taken it off beforehand with the tires still on there to kind of give you a little bit of traction. Honestly, it really doesn't take that much to get these off, though. Next, I'm going to go ahead and kind of clean up some of this grease a little bit, and we can then take out our cotter pin. Bend our cotter pin back, try and straighten it out. This kit's not going to come with one, so you will want to try and save it. That way you don't have to buy another one. Next, we're going to go ahead and take off our castle nut and then our washer. Since we're going to be reusing these parts, I want to make sure that I clean off all that grease. So I'm just taking some brake cleaner. Just gonna Spray them down and then kind of wipe them off with a in the shop towel. Next, we're gonna get our outer bearing out of the way. If you want, you can just kind of pull forward and pop it out, and then we can slip that off. And as you can see, we still have a bunch of grease all over our spindle, so we're gonna go ahead and clean that off as well. Next, we can go ahead and remove our brake assembly from our brake flange. What we're going to need to do is pop off the nuts from these five bolts right here. And we're going to want to save these because they do not give you any more in your kit. So we'll just reuse them. Now we have all those nuts off, we can go ahead and break our brake flange free. off and then we're going to cut our line for our electric brakes. I'm going to leave some excess just in case um, anyone ever decides to switch back but most likely won't once you're switching over to disc brakes. Go ahead and cut these as well and then we can cap those off with some electrical tape. Next, we're going to go ahead and put on our mounting bracket for our brake caliper. And to do that, we're going to want to make sure that we have it facing this way. As you can see, it's going to kind of force the brake caliper away from the trailer frame to give us enough space. If you look at the other side, it's going to be kind of nice and flat, no wording on there or anything. But if you look at it on this side, you'll have the model number for that specific part. We'll go ahead and slip it up. There's a bunch of different holes on here so you can kind of adjust it as needed 
Um, if you have issues with space, maybe you're not going to be able to get the caliper on there because of the frame being in the way, you can kind of adjust that around. I'm going to do it so that our calipers are facing towards the rear of our trailer. So I'm going to go ahead and reuse those nuts and I'll just hand tighten them on and then we'll go ahead and tighten them down a little bit more with our wrench and then torque them down. Now we have our mounting flange ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and get our rotors. We'll get our inner bearing and our grease seal, our oil seal. And we're gonna go ahead and just kind of oil up our bearing a little bit, trying to kind of get it inside of there, make things a little bit easier later on. I'm just gonna rub that around a little bit. I'm also gonna put a little bit on the race. Just gonna get that going and kind of rub it in. So make things glide a little bit easier. Drop in our bearing. And then we can go ahead and drop in our grease seal. Now we're gonna go ahead and hammer in our grease seal. To do that, I'm gonna use a piece of wood so I can get a nice even pressure going down on it so it'll go straight in. If it comes in kinda crooked, then you can have the potential for a leak. Make sure that that's just kind of flush. Go just a little bit more with it. All right, and that's pretty good. Now we can go ahead and take our rotor and pop it onto our spindle. And we're gonna give it a few good pushes, kind of get it in place. And then we can take our outer bearing and slip that on. I'm gonna go ahead and just grease this up as well. Slip that in. Get that pushed on. And then we can go ahead and take our washer and our castle nut. And we'll start threading that in. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you get this nice and tight and that's gonna kinda of suck the whole rotor into place. And then once we have it fully tight, we can go ahead and back it off so that we can get our cotter pin in. So I've got it fully tight now. It's kinda of just barely covering the cotter pin hole. I'm gonna back it off just enough to get that on. You can actually tighten that up eh, just a bit more. Basically, you just want to make sure that you have no movement between the rotor and the spindle here. You don't want that wobbling at all. Pop our cotter pin in place. You may need to kind of use your pliers to get it to go back in if yours isn't fully straight. I'm going to clean off that extra grease that we still had in there. And once we get it folded down, we can kind of spin it back up so that there's no chance of it coming out. Now we can go ahead and put on our oil cap. I'm going to do it hand tight and then I'm going to come back with my channel locks. But I'm also going to use a little bit of padding with some shop towels just because this is plastic. You don't want to end up scratching that up or breaking it. I'm going to go ahead and my pry bar to kind of prevent our rotor from spinning. And just tighten this down. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and put on our caliper. Now, I do have an issue with the frame clearance right here just for this top bolt, but what I can do is just kind of slip it in there a little bit. It'll give me enough room to pop that on and then I can push it through the rest of the way and tighten it up. Uh, we wanna make sure that we have our fittings for our fluid facing towards the center of the trailer. And we'll just pop that in. You have to kind of play around with the brake pads a little bit. They like to move on you. Fighting the bolt. There we go. 
and then we can grab our other bolt and slip it into the bottom. I got plenty of room down there. Get them hand tight. Next, I'm going to go ahead and take a half inch wrench and we can fully tighten these down. Now we can go ahead and pop off our little cap here and we'll go ahead and put some oil in. We're going to fill it up just to the bottom of our opening here. And we'll spin it around a little bit and kind of let it leak into the bearings and lube everything up. Just spin it around. It's a little cold, so our oil is a little uh, thick right now so I'm just gonna let it kind of sit upside down let it kind of leak down and get into everything and we can go ahead and repeat the same process at each brake hub. Well I think that about does it for today's installation of the Kodiak disc brake kit here on our flatbed trailer. My name is Kevin thanks for watching.